I'm Katherine Martin, founder of Quiet Time Ministries. And every day I have the privilege of meeting alone with the one who actually created me, who made the world. His name is Jesus, and he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And this is my quiet time. In my quiet time, I noticed something in Revelation 2 and 3, and it was a repeated phrase. Seven times Jesus said it to all seven of the churches of Western Asia Minor. And because Jesus said it so many times, all of a sudden a huge light bulb went off in my mind. And I believe it was the Holy Spirit turning on the light of a very powerful truth for me. At the end of each of the seven letters in Revelation 2 and 3 written from Jesus to seven churches in Western Asia Minor, Jesus says, to him who overcomes, or he who overcomes. Now here's what I realize. No matter what I face in life, and I don't care how difficult the trial, Jesus expects me to overcome. Now that word overcome is nikao in the Greek, and it means to be victorious, conquer, prevail, win the case. It means to emerge triumphantly. It's used 28 times through the New Testament and 15 times in the book of Revelation. That means that becoming an overcomer is a big part of the message of Revelation. And the message to overcome is directed to individuals in the church. And what Jesus is saying is that no matter what you face, you can be victorious in the midst of it. He does not expect you to give up, but instead to gain the victory. Jesus is the one who makes us overcomers in life. And this is powerful for me because sometimes trials seem too much. And maybe you've felt like that at times. And what's amazing is that in all the years I've studied Revelation, I just never saw this before in quite this way. It seems that the Lord was saying, Catherine, I want you to overcome in this that you are currently experiencing. And not only did I know he wanted me to overcome, but he was saying, I can overcome. Now, there's a great verse about this, and it's in John 16, verse 33. And I want to read it to you. It says, it's, it's Jesus speaking. And he says this, these things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. And this is important in understanding the ability to overcome. I don't have the human strength to overcome, but Christ who lives in me can overcome no matter what happens. He is able to overcome in anything. So I learned to say, I can't, but he can. I love the November 1st reading by Oswald Chambers in My Utmost for His Highest. It's always been a favorite of mine. He talks about how God works in our lives. And here's what he says. No human being can stand that unless he is identified with Jesus Christ. We are not sanctified for ourselves. We are called into the fellowship of the gospel. And things happen which have nothing to do with us. God is getting us into fellowship with himself. Let him have his way. If you do not, instead of being of the slightest use to God in his redemptive work in the world, you will be a hindrance and a clog. The first thing God does with us is to get us based on rugged reality until we do not care what becomes of us individually as long as he gets his way for the purpose of his redemption. Why shouldn't we go through heartbreaks? 
Through these doorways, God is opening up ways of fellowship with his son. Most of us fall and collapse at the first grip of pain. We sit down on the threshold of God's purpose and die away of self-pity. And all so-called Christian sympathy will aid us to our deathbed. But God will not. He comes with the grip of the pierced hand of his son and says, Enter into fellowship with me. Arise and shine. If through a broken heart God can bring his purposes to pass in the world, then thank him for breaking your heart. Oh, friends, what we are going to learn is that Jesus does not call us to be a victim and give up. No, he calls us to overcome and gain the victory and win the case. So this week, I am focusing on victory and overcoming through Christ who strengthens me. Thank you, Lord, for showing me your expectation of me that I am to overcome. And thank you that you are the one who overcomes in and through me and that nothing is too great for you. And that's my quiet time for this week. God bless you as you continue on in the great adventure of knowing Him.